our messaging is that being bilingual is something that is beautiful. It's something to be proud of. It's something to attain towards. And so with our goals, we have access to the raw data using the platform with iReady, but does it tell a story? Does it connect the dots? Does it resonate? And for our teachers, our teachers are there because they want to make an impact on the world. They want to make an impact on society. So as leaders, we have to find a way to speak their love language. Welcome back to the show, and we're very excited to be speaking with a couple of people from Tyler ISD. I believe we have uh, Mina Naranjo and Sarah Hancock, but what I'm going to do is let you introduce yourselves to the, our listeners today. So uh, I guess uh, let us know who you are and kind of what your role is within to, uh, Tyler ISD. All right. So my name is Mina Naranjo. I am a proud principal of Birdwell Dual Language Immersion School. This is my third year at the campus. My name is Sarah Hancock. I'm the master teacher at Birdwell Dual Language Immersion School, and this is my fifth year at our campus. All right. Well, I, I love to hear that. I love visiting with elementary principals, teachers, and people that are working within that background. So, so I heard some something very interesting. One of three schools, I think, or, or, or that uh, reached some type of of achievement. Can, can tell us a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, so last year was our first year of implementation of iReady at the campus level, and we were really pleased with the results that we saw, but little did we know that iReady was also looking at our data as well. And from that data, they extracted phenomenal growth for our students in the areas of math. And we did well in reading as well, but for the distinction with iReady, it had to do with our math stretch goals. And so for us, that's amazing because we don't look at just every student growing. We want them to have amazing growth for the amount of time that they do spend with us. So that was why we ended up getting that distinction. Oh, that's that's great to hear. So anything you wanted, I mean, that you can share also, Sarah, and in regards to this or, you know, on your campus or yes. same campus? I'm trying to... Yeah, same, campus, same campus. Same, same, campus, the, kind of, the same yeah, so, campus. So then I, let me, let me yes. tweak it a little bit then as, as we're talking about that. So so how did you get to achieve that goal? Because again, you don't just come by that by accident. You know, so it was something that very was very intentional. So talk a little bit about how you progress through this to get to this achievement. Yeah, so our um, teachers work really hard with our students. Um, we've been using iReady this school year, and a lot of our students achieved the super stretch growth in math, and so we received the, the distinction as being a super stretch school. All right. So that, we had a lot of celebration around that. Oh, I'm glad you said celebrations because I do want to talk a little bit about celebrations, but, and, and we'll do that, but you mentioned data, and, and you talked about, you know, not only did we take the data, but also uh, I ready or took yeah, the data as well. Yeah, that was surprising. Like that's the first time I've never had a, a, a solution for learning where the company looks at the data and recognizes the school. So it was really uh, thoughtful and our teachers really appreciated that because they worked so hard and they had to, you know, figure out how the system works, make it work for their regular instructional routines and make sense of the data. And with the data, we have our own way of looking at data that goes beyond the way iReady presents it because iReady is extracting the numerical values mm -hmm. of the data, mm -hmm. but we also take it a step further and humanize the data and talk about every single student and figure out what their story is and how that works uh, in a variety of formats, be it whole group, small group, individually, personalized learning or teacher assigned tasks, whatever the case may be, we had a lot of teachers that had the flexibility, the earned autonomy to use it in a way that made sense, in a way that was meaningful, and share how it went, whether it was going well, whether it was not going well, having the freedom to make adaptations throughout the year, but coming collectively to make it work overall. Well, I love that because you said, you know, and, and I'm going to use a different term, but you said, you know, basically earned empowerment. Yes. Uh, you know, you, you do well, you get to have more freedom and, and autonomy and earn autonomy in, on the things that we do. Yeah, you don't have to micromanage how everything needs right. to work and what it needs to look like. It's not a one size fits all for every student, and it shouldn't be that way for teachers. Teachers have professional judgment. They have the experience. So why not allow them to use those gifts as opposed to dictating how things have to be from the top down. No, exactly. So Sarah, if you will, just kind of talk a little bit because we talked about that. It doesn't happen by accident. 
Tell me about some of the ways that you integrated or you had those conversations with teachers to impact instruction for students. Absolutely. So um, after our teachers have their beginning of the year diagnostic test, we meet during PLCs. We look at the data. We break it down. We talk about individual students. Um, and then we talk about a course of action. So what are our next steps for these students? What resources are we going to use within iReady, whether it's their pathway, their personalized instruction pathway, um, whether we're pulling those small group teacher-led instruction tools, um, whether we're using those resources, um, and we create small groups using that data as well. And then um, as we progress through the school year, our students will take their second diagnostic in the middle of the year and will reevaluate their progress. And it's just a, a it's cycle. It's an ongoing cycle, you know, and we, I call it different iterations or pop cycles and problem of practices and, and things are there. But you said something earlier in, in the previous conversation that I, that I overheard and, you know, how to take data and make it uh, uh, pretty, something yes. to look at and how to do the difference. Appeal. So talk, it yeah, needs how to have to, appeal. So that, again, our teachers know, okay, this is why I'm looking at the data. It's not just numbers. It's, right. it's it, it really paints a picture for what we're doing. So it talk does. to me a little bit about how and, you take that data and really and make it, it really come to And it really is about storytelling. And, you know, like even for our shirts, we're a dual language campus. Oh, and our shirts, the shirts. They, look, my shirts, they look so cute. <laughs> Bilingue es Any bonito. Any Carol G fans yeah, exactly. out there? <laughs> uh, but it looks cute. It has appeal. And what's our messaging? Our messaging is that being bilingual is something that is beautiful. It's something to be proud of. It's something to attain towards. And so with our goals, we have access to the raw data using the, the platform with iReady. But does it tell a story? Does it connect the dots? Does it resonate? And for our teachers, our teachers are there because they want to make an impact on the world. They want to make an impact on society. So as leaders, we have to find a way to speak their love language and use that data because that data can really narrate a story. And in the presentation that we were giving earlier today, one thing that we talked about was mindset. It really is about mindset. And how do you take data to help uplift teachers, not beat them down, and look at opportunities for problem solving, look at opportunities for hitting growth? Because you could be hard on a teacher, but a teacher is going to be harder on themselves. So why would you want to be harder on that teacher than they are themselves? And again, you don't want to stifle creativity either. So what we did was we tried to make the data look beautiful, mm -hmm. not to fluff numbers. I'm talking about aesthetics. I'm talking about color. I'm talking about infographics. I'm talking about language. I'm talking about all those components. And through the presentation, you start narrating. Through the presentation, you also have opportunities for teachers to engage in conversations to look at systemic strengths across the school and areas that need to improve on. So for example, in iReady, we're a pre-K through eighth grade school, and there's a reading assessment in Spanish, and that allows us to compare how our students are progressing with language to see if there's um, any low points because of language interference or low points because not of language, but rather um, a possible reading delay, a possible math calculation um, delay as well. And so it's an instrument that allows us to have conversations about individual students. And that's another piece I would say with the data is that we talked about each and every single student three times a year using the data. And, and, and I like that. And, and I'll, I'll bet I can even say you talk more than three times a year because that's when you have your beginning, middle, and end. Yes. But all of your PLC conversations is based around students. And I love the way that you framed that. Mm -hmm. You know, is it, you know, because it's individualized instru instruction. You talked about personalized. It is because you also not only look at the iReady data for this student, that student, and that student, but you look at their attendance and you look at their discipline individually by student. And the teachers get to tell you the things that they are proud of of the student and the things that they're currently working on and any concerns that they may have about the student so that we can intervene and do something. And sometimes it's not about the reading and math. It's about the emotional intelligence and meeting that student's EQ needs. And, and it's interesting because you don't have this honor with, with just having conversations with teachers. So I'm sure that there was conversations with students. I'm sure that we reached out to parents. So Sarah, can you talk a little bit about how y'all were engaged with were bringing in parents and even having those conversations with te uh, students about their stretch growth and about their typical growth and, and the things that were going on with them in instruction? Absolutely. So 
Um, I'll speak specifically to our middle school students since we are a pre-K through eighth grade campus. Our students have data trackers across all levels, all grade levels, but specifically our middle school students had um, like student-led conferences that they did mm -hmm. where they had their data binder. Um, we brought parents in, the parents um, got to stand in front of their child as they presented their data and talked to their parent. The student talked to their parent about where wow. they are, what their goals mm -hmm. are, um, and what they need to do to achieve those goals. So, and how is that not preparing them for what they're going to be doing after they get out of absolutely. school? Absolutely. And the different things. Absolutely. That there, Even so. in our ARD meetings, they're mm -hmm. student led and the students talk about their data as well. And so, Again, everyone has ownership. It's a campus where we have high expectations of ourselves and of each other and where the parents have high expectations of us, but we also trust each other to uh, do it however you need to, but get us there, get us the results. And the teachers are very resourceful, creative, and uh, have a lot of determination to resolve anything that may seem like an obstacle at first. No, and, and what I'm hearing you say is it's about relationships. People don't care how much you know until you, they know how much you care. You know, so really developing that with our students, developing that with our parents, but you, you also said something else. And I want you to kind of share a little bit because you said we want to celebrate our students. We want to make sure that we're, we're celebrating the successes there. So talk through some of the celebrations that you've had because of this and some of the other celebrations that you've son, done to, to to celebrate instruction, yes. celebrate growth. And so, you know, we have our Viernes Victorioso. Those are the, the events that we have after each grading period to celebrate academic successes of individual students. And so that had been part of our campus norm. And of course, there are recognitions there pertaining to iReady growth and data targets that they reach. But over the summer, uh, oh, something cool happened. Someone <laughs> got an email. I, we got to do it. Let's hear it. Someone got an email uh, on campus to talk about the recognition for stretch growth. We had no idea what it was. I had to look it up. I'm like, what is this? I'm like, okay, let me check it out. And then wait, what? One of three campuses in wow, Texas? Texas is, is huge. Yeah. And then I'm like, one of what 30 in the nation? I'm like, wait, what is this? That's let me. That's really big. This is yeah. a big deal because. Uh, about several weeks later, we also got our accountability projections for the state of Texas. And we have been in a campus. However, we had not always hit an A in every single category across the board. Well, when we got those projections, we hit A's across wow, the board. That and is the A amazing. that we hit for the first time had to do with growth, domain 2A. And what measures stretch growth? I ready. And so again, you start to see how things just come together. And so we were excited, not only about our state accountability, but also the recognition for our campus because everyone works hard. Our students work hard, our teachers and our staff, our support staff work really, really hard. We bend over backwards to cover each other, to help with you know, lunches, after school, morning arrival, in order to protect a lot of time for the teacher to be able to plan, to be able to conference, to be able to do the things that they need to do. And we all work together as a system. So we decided, let's start a new tradition. Let's start the year off celebrating any kind of success we've had in meeting our campus goals. And we also threw in the recognition for iReady. And we had an amazing pep rally. We brought in the band. We did things that were just so radically different for our school, right? Just so radically different for our school. And it threw the students like totally off because they had never experienced it. Uh, we're fortunate to have a big auditorium in there. And we just had a party in the hallways. There was a lot of commotion. There was a lot of noise. Um, it just, it felt like carnaval. I don't know oh. how else to explain it. <laughs> It felt uh, like Carnaval, great. the that's band great. entered through one end of the building and we pulled all the kids out of the classrooms. We gave them glow sticks. There was gridlock around the hallways throughout the building because the party was in the hallways and it led into the auditorium and a lot of celebrations, a lot of recognitions, and it didn't end there. Uh, I already was like, we still want to go hard. Oh, we still want to do more. And go. I'm like, well, what do you want to do? Like, 
pizza for everybody. Ooh, oh, the kids, well, they, the well, kids they, they love don't, the pizza. They don't like pizza, do they? Gosh, somebody, they'll do anything. Yeah. For they'll pizza. do anything for it pizza. Is, uh, it is so great to hear because how many times do you hear about it? we're celebrating on Friday nights because we won a ball game, but now to bring that into the campus, man, yeah. what a great and, transition. That well, is amazing. Everyone works hard, and at the end of the year, you close it, but where's the follow-up at the beginning of the year? And those ideas really came from our teacher leaders. You know, they were like, we take the test, we take the summer off, we come back, we see our results, but luego que, then what, and, and you then know? What? Exactly. And it's like, okay, well then let's celebrate it. And they came up with the itinerary, what it could look like, and it went really, really well. But it still didn't end there because we had... Uh, I already say, but we still want to do more. Right? <laughs> I love that. And we then what's the next? And we're more. still going to do more. And we're going to continue. Yes. And so uh, the same day as our pep rally was the same day as the pizza parties that afternoon. But in the evening, we also had open house. Oh, well, so we celebrate, celebrate with parents. Celebrate with parents, yes. too. So it, it was a gift that kept on giving. And so it really was a historical day for us on our campus. And we wanted to continue uh, to happen so that it is a tradition because you work hard and then you party hard, right? You no, don't want to party exactly. first, you want to work hard, and everyone does. Well, congratulations on that. That is such a, 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 an outstanding achievement to be able to have. So let me ask you this question, and I'll, I'll, I'll do it this way, and I'll start off with you, Sarah, if you will. Um, everybody, and you mentioned this, everybody works hard. There's not a teacher that's not working hard. There's not a custodian. I mean, they all have impact. There's not an administrator that's not working very hard to do that. But not everybody has the same results. Right. So you weren't also, you know, you didn't have all these same results before, but now you did this year. So what words of advice would you give to uh, uh, an administrator, to a teacher on saying, hey, this is what we would say that you do? And, and, and again, uh, words of advice, words of wisdom. So one thing that I think that really kind of changed the game for us this year was we made our campus goals visible for everyone. Visibility. For teachers, for students, it was part of our conversations. We had posters throughout the school of what our campus goals were, and we constantly tracked those goals. And we had data posters in the wall where we're tracking to see how well we're doing towards accomplishing those goals. So I think that that was a big piece to our success this year. Everyone knows what the target is and everyone's going for it. All right, that's that's great to hear. So here's how, we, you know, thank you so much for coming and visiting. So there's one more way, not one more way, but there's one more question I wanna ask each of you. And again, it's gonna say, okay, in three years, my campus, and I don't know what that is going to be. So again, it's hard to get there. But and maintain, like you said, and we got all A's, everything across. So in three years, my campus will be a super stretch school. My campus in the next three years is going to be the best in Texas. And that's three years. And then nationally. And the reason why I say that is because our kids have the same instructional amount of days and minutes and are pushing out the success they are in two languages, mm -hmm. in two languages. And that is a superpower, let me tell you. It is. And if if every student can learn at least two languages, I think that would be amazing. Well, we are expecting to hear great things from you and from your school district and your campus as well. So thank you again for coming and sharing the excitement of having that super stretch goal and meeting that and the celebrations that you've had there. So again, if you want to hear more about it, and tell us your campus again so that everybody knows. Birdwell Dual Language Immersion School. Birdwell Dual Language School. You know, so know what's going on. And, and again, if you want to hear more from uh, uh, Ms. Naranjo and Ms. Hancock, reach out to Curriculum Associates on their website and also come out to www.curriculumassociates.com for some great information and some great celebrations that we're having. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank, Thank you. you.